This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we're going to make a video about pests in Arizona. You guys have been asking, what's up with scorpions? What's up with ants? What's up with snakes? I've already made a video talking about wildlife in Arizona. You can search this channel for all of the wildlife, but this is going to be specific about pets or pests. Okay, this is my pet, my cat. I have no idea what he's staring at, but he's apparently looking at something out the window. He's probably thinking about how he can go out there, but he's not allowed to because he's a house pet. Anyway, you guys can uh, subscribe to Living in Arizona. This is a channel dedicated to discussions about Arizona. Here's Dangerous Arizona Wildlife. You can see lots of different content. Just go to the homepage and search. I mean, there's a whole bunch talk conversations that we've had. And also, uh, keep up with us on Facebook in our group, Living in Arizona. I'll post a link below and you can follow Living in Arizona's group where we're going to share information and collaborate as a community. And then if you'd like to find out about cool places to go all across Arizona, you can also follow us on Instagram and I'll post a link below Live in Arizona. Anyway, let's go ahead and dial this in here. So before we get started pulling off this list uh, from uh, bepestfree.com, this is, I'm going to, I'm just going to share my experience with the the invasive species that I've, or the problems that I've had with pests here in my home in Queen Creek, right? Santan Valley area. So the biggest pest that I've had a problem with, especially in my garden, is mice. Little mice, believe it or not. They're so cute. You know, they're this big, they look cute and everything like that. But uh, I have a garden back there and I was noticing that my, some of my plants were getting nibbled on and I was like, what is that? Is that my dog doing that? Does my dog just like garlic cloves or what? And, uh, you know, the little sprouts that come up. Uh, does my dog just like eating kale? And I was like, something's nibbling on this. And it didn't quite dawn on me. Then one morning I went out there and I had this bucket with water in it and there was a little mouse in there. And I said, darn it, I have mice. And so I went to the store and I got these little glue things called, uh, they're called Tomcatter. Problem with that is the, the mice don't exactly die right away. So you got to figure out a way to... Um, make it as painless for the mice as possible, which I don't really like doing, but um, someone said that they just shoot them with a, a, a pel uh, 22. So they have their 22, they just use their 22 to just, you know, you don't want the mice to suffer, but actually what's ended up happening is my dog, he'll go out there and he'll just take care of them before I even get to them. He'll find them and he'll find the, the little mouse trap and he'll take care of it right away, um, which is cool about having one of those dogs that were bred for that. Uh, so yeah. Straight off the bat. The second thing is uh, ants. I've noticed in my garden in particular, ants. In my front yard, I've had those. Little, I've had big ants and little ones. So you can see right here on this list, it does say ants. Because my house is new, it does have termites protection. It doesn't have termites, but it has termite protection. But they say that if you plant things close to the house, that can uh, get rid of your termite protection. So, but I've known people who've had new houses after a couple years and they get termites. So termites are a big thing, but these ants, man, these are little suckers that are irritating. Um, I use Raid for that, you know, the Raid stuff and that works, but you got to spray it on their ant hills, and then they'll just build a new ant hill. So I'm like, and I have the, I have a pest control company that comes out, but he sprayed like three days before rain. So I guess it was null and void. He's coming back out in May. And if, if he doesn't get it done this time, then it's like, whatever. Another pest that I would say is these birds, like not pig, well, there's pigeons out here, but just these, these, some of these birds, not all the birds, but they eat my dog's food out of his thing. And then they just sit there and they, you know, when I'm gone, they'll just eat it. And then they just sit there and they poop, 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 poop constantly on my patio. And I'm like, suckers, man. <laughs> and they, they say they eat the grapes too, which is uh, yet to be seen, but we'll have to see about that. So like some of these birds around here, um, pigeons in particular are one of the ones that you'll see on the list. Uh, if we just dial it in on this list here, I have not seen any cockroaches. I haven't really seen tarantulas or other spiders, thankfully. And I have not yet seen any scorpions, but I do know that my neighbor says they have scorpions at their house down the road in a more established community. And he even told me, he said, just take a black light and you can see them in the backyard. I have yet to take a black light to see if I have any in my backyard yet. But being that I've already got mice, I've already got ants, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before I get these. I have once been stung, yes, yeah, stung by a scorpion on the kneecap. I was uh, I was playing with some toys when I was younger 
and this was in Arizona, and I was kneeling down, and it seemed like there was like, I don't know, a sweater or something that I was kind of had underneath me, and I got, I was like, whoa, what is that? It kind of, it kind of feels like a bee sting at first. It hurts a little bit, like kind of like a shot, like if you get a shot, but then it starts to itch. That was the worst part about it. It itched worse than anything I've ever been stung by for like, like it was right on the kneecap. I don't know if that's just a susceptible area that's more raw to getting itchy, but that was, that's what happens when you get stung by a scorpion. And my mom, she freaked out. She called like uh, the hospital and she was like, do I need to bring them in here? And they said, how big is it? Because if it's a small one, it's more dangerous than if it's a big one. Okay, so scorpions, yeah, I know you guys are pretty worried about that one, but you know, it's just, I, I mean, just try, you gotta keep things clean. Don't let things build up. Don't let clutter build up. Like on the side of my yard, I have a perfect habitat for um, mice right now because they're digging a trench for, they're building a jacuzzi in my backyard. And because of that, there's like this big trench that they had to put the pipeline in and they left it exposed. I had to tell the guy, I said, hey, can I just fill it in myself? Are you done? But we had to wait for the inspector to come out and inspect the pipeline from the county. But uh, yeah, I mean, that was like a perfect habitat for mice. Just between that and like the, the trash out there, you know, just this, this it's construction zone um, with the garden also. So I'm, I'm really eager to clean all that up. Like don't have clutter, don't have messes, and you won't have as many pests because that creates the perfect climate. Even these flies, like they don't have flies on this list, but I consider flies a a um, a invasive pest. And yeah, there are you do get flies out here in Arizona, especially the closer you live to like farms. Um, even when I fertilize my backyard, that tends to like bring in the flies, bring in the gnats and the little mosquitoes. And I don't like that, but I have to fertilize the plants. Um, so yeah, those mosquitoes and gnats do exist around here. I mean, none of these are like out of control. It's not like intolerable. It's just, there are a lot of them. There's a lot of different variety of pests that you'll get. I guess you get, get that kind of anywhere, right? And then you have bees. I do have bees, I, I, but I have a hummingbird feeder out there and they, they've been going, pulling off the nectar on the hummingbird feeder or, you know, the sweet stuff. They use it more than the hummingbird, although the hummingbird does come, but that's the one I like. And um, the bees, you know, they, they haven't stung me or they don't even like, they're not aggressive on me. They're just there and uh, I don't have a problem with them as long as they don't have a problem with me. If I go walk by them, as long as they're not trying to like swarm me, I'm cool with it. Uh, bed bugs, I haven't really had an issue with this yet, but again, it's about keeping your house clean. Like I, I'm going to get a, I, I do a deep clean about every two months, whether you want to do it yourself or you hire someone, but you want to do a deep clean in your house, you know, clean your carpets, all that stuff. I'm not saying you have to go get a steam cleaner in your carpets every two months, but you know, maybe once a year or something would be a good idea. So, uh, and again, back to industry, if, if you work in any of this stuff, home, uh, homemade services are in demand out here, housekeeping services, um, pest control, there's too many of those companies. But, uh, you know, landscaping companies, not just people who go out and do the landscaping, but I've noticed that like there's a demand for people who do the upkeep, like the landscaping cleaning. So outdoor lands or housekeepers, right? So just people who come by for, you know, $75 a, a month and just come by, you know, once or twice for 30 minutes and just kind of tidy up the, the backyard real quick, do the edger and, you know, get rid of the leaves with the, the blower. I mean, that's a, that's a service. So there are related jobs to all this stuff that's indoor and outdoor pest control, not just the people who come around and spray the stuff to keep the pests away. Uh, here's, here's another list that's from a different website, Burns Pest Elimination. Dot com. You can see they've got cockroaches, tarantulas, bed bugs, fleas and ticks, bark scorpions. Here's some of their tips. Here are some measures you can take to prevent pests must contend with, such as fleas, ticks, tarantulas, roaches, and invading your home. Get a bird feeder. Birds eat insects. Yeah, I mean, the birds that I personally like in my backyard are doves and some of the, the other bird, like cardinals, I like blue jays, stuff like that when they come. I haven't seen any, I've seen a cardinal, but I have not seen any blue jays. I don't think they're here in Phoenix, but you know, you get cactus wrens, but doves, I really like doves. The only thing is they were eating my grass seed. Um, don't leave food out. Roaches like to eat. So when you have your, if you have your dog food out, make sure you cover it up. Seals and cracks, the harder the, for the bugs to get inside. Uh, yet again, I have a container outside with my fertilizers in it. And I noticed the gnats just swarm to that. They're like on that. And even though I have it sealed, I'm, I, 
They don't like that. I have a pond back there too. They say that there's some fish that eat the larva. So I'm looking to get these fish that eat the mosquito larva. Uh, they, I, they, I have considered getting chickens, but I don't. my mom said don't do it, so I'm not going to get chickens because she said they're problematic you know for everything that they do good they don't do some other things my cat he does like mice like little toys but i he i don't know if he knows how to catch them we'll see if i ever get a mice inside my house if my cat can do that but my dog he's cool but when he sees one he'll go in there if if he sees a mice he'll go in there and dig up the whole hole like the whole tree like he's he dug up my whole banana tree because he saw something go in there i mean and i was upset i was like and he, he also did that with my oregano plant because the the mice were burrowing. So, but that was back before I knew that that was what it was. I was just like, hey, you just ripping up my plants, dude? <laughs> Come to find out it was a little bit more than that. It was mice. Um, here's another website, Arizona's Best Choice Pest Controls Termite Services. Again, you're going to, if you get, if you buy a house, termites, you're going to want to get termite protection. This is a thing. It's not a joke. The other thing is they say small rodents, they have mice and rats. I've yet to see any rats. I don't know how to get a rat uh, buster, but I did get, actually I do know how to get a rat buster, but I haven't had to use it. I went on Amazon and I got this thing called Ratzilla or something like that. It's like this, it's like this big box and when a rat goes in there, it's, it just zaps them. So, uh, you know, these other pest control companies, if you don't want to do it on your own, they just set these boxes back there and, you know, they come by every once in a while and they clean it. So that's something else to consider. But, uh, you know, no one likes to have to take out animals or like this stuff. But I'm just saying, these are pests and they're pests for a reason. They're called pests for a reason. It's unfortunate that you have to take them out, but it's bad. Like you, living in that kind of environment with mice eating your food. I mean, you won't even be able to grow a garden if you got mice back there. You, you won't even be able to go back to some areas of your yard if you got ants crawling everywhere. I mean, we're talking ant hills forever. I mean, I could show you guys videos of this stuff. If you guys want, I can make a second video about it. Uh, you've got this other stuff, just some other ones that I haven't touched on. Um, American cockroach, German cockroach, scorpion, black widow, spider, brown spider, dog tick, fleas, subterranean termite, drywood termite, carpenter ant, crazy ant, feral ant. So, you know, just like any big city, when you bring in imp uh, supply from around the world or even your local in the United States, you're, some of these shipments are coming in with other pests and even people who are moving, like some of you are coming from Georgia or Tennessee or Louisiana or Texas, on those shipments, you might be bringing pests with you that are all of a sudden gonna take over. And, and we're talking a lot of different people have moved here. I'm also gonna be making a video talking about uh, my neighbors, like where everyone's from. And you'd be surprised that a lot of these people are not from Arizona. Very seldom, do you, like over half for sure are from other places. So half of the people moving into these homes are from other places. And the number one place they're moving from is California. And I'm gonna share my experience with that and give you guys some insight on this stuff. Cause like I said, even out here, you know, it's 10 to 15 new homes being built every week, at least, at least just in this little vicinity that I'm in. It's a lot of new families moving in every single week. That adds up times 52 weeks in a year, you know, and, and that's just, that's a, that's a very conservative number. I mean, if I wanted to get aggressive with it, I could say there could be up to 30 or 40 new uh, homes being built. Look at my cat. Anyways, guys, click on one of these other videos. Subscribe to Living in Arizona, this channel. Check us out on Instagram. Join that group. Check below. I'll leave the links. See you guys next time.